love is clearly my uh, coming out anthem. Um, <laughs> I find it interesting when I get comments from people about it and how the song speaks to them being clear about their relationship with God and announcing to the world that this is who I love. And, and uh, I think the song is really clear what I'm saying, and and uh, I'm glad people get other stuff out of it. But I really did mean it to say that uh, this was an argument in my head, this was an argument in my spirit, and this was an argument in my life to make peace with my my sexuality. And and uh, I did write the song for my then partner, but I didn't write it just for one person. I didn't write it just for him. I wrote it for uh, um, for everyone that's struggling, everyone that feels like they can't make peace with God because I, mean, I understand all the arguments, but no matter what, everyone deserves Jesus. And if he were standing here, he'd tell you the same thing. And, and uh, there's a poem at the end of it kisses and uh, really saying that I don't know how long I have with you but I'm going to treasure every single kiss I have from you and uh, I didn't know that was going to come true in uh, my relationship but uh, um, certainly found it hard to uh, perform the song after the relationship ended but I'm considering putting it on my next record, OK Sex, and, and uh, taking the song for what it is. And what it is is a declaration of uh, this is the one fight I'm not going to fight for the rest of my life. That as a Christian, I gave up you know, a good 20 years of life having this battle. And for what? Um, to hurt other people, to ruin people's lives, to confuse my children to uh, not focus on the more important aspects of my relationship with God and my life and my career. Um, I think this is something that Christianity really has to take another look at. And uh, another look at how we treat people that we don't understand and, and truthfully how we interpret the Bible. That we have to make sure that we're not judgment where there isn't any and uh, follow me on YouTube to find out everything I've said on the subject and uh, the next song on the record is the vanity song and uh, uh, I did the vanity song on Does God Sleep no I'm sorry I did the vanity song on zombies and uh, um, and uh, I went back to it for this record uh, this, this, is, this was the way I was performing it live on, on uh, Zombies. It was done with a distorted guitar sound, and uh, I didn't reproduce that live. And I started doing it a cappella, then I started doing it with a drum track. And, uh, and uh, this is the drum track version I was doing live at the time. And, and the Vanity song is taken from Isaiah, and it's uh, uh, an attack on our worldliness, our carnalness, and going back to this is my love, I think it's carnal that we spend our Christian lives fighting people over their orientation. I'm, I'm not even saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying I think it's a carnal passion that we have to be obsessed with people's sexuality and to talk about it and to attack it. We should be spiritual. We should be catering to people's spirit. And we should be encouraging their spirits in the Lord. And, uh, and I think it's carnal to spend your whole life in Christianity battling your, your sexuality. And I was about to say battling your flesh. And what I want to say is, is we do battle our flesh all the time. But our battle is a spiritual battle. It's not one of conversation. It's not one of condemnation. And it's not one of getting into it with another brother or sister. And it's not done on the pulpit. It's 
down on our knees in prayer before the Lord. And any gay Christian or any ex-gay Christian, God forbid, has spent so much time on their knees before the Lord battling something like you wouldn't believe. To have anyone on the outside even have an opinion of the subject is offensive. And I think it's cruel. And I think the vanity song addresses that. back on the queers in church, but we have the, the stereotypical fat pastor's wife, you know, putting out the cookies and coffee in the back of the sanctuary. And, uh, you know, again, I, I, I really uh, love that Jesus said, you know, if you haven't sinned, why don't you throw the first stone? Um, that at some point, we have to start pointing the finger at ourselves. And get on our knees and worship God and every day let Him change us from the inside and see what falls off and see what our testimony is. And the vanity song says, my people have become lazy, my people have become greedy, my people have become carnal, and my people have become vain, in vain, and the judgment that's coming can't be stopped because that's the product of this vanity. And I have aggressively spoken against this vanity and spoken against the way we harp on the outside of other human beings being reflected of how obsessed we are with our outside. And Jesus said, you can clean that all you want, but if on the inside is just rotten, rotten corpses, you've accomplished nothing. Once again, my dear friend Leah wrote a poem that led to the song Fences. I don't think she was impressed with this song. I, I don't know, man. I'm just going to go into her book of poetry and steal everything she wrote and never tell her what I did with it. Um, she has horrible taste in music, but she writes great lyrics. And Fences is uh, clearly about we stand on a fence, and on one side we serve the Lord, and on the other side we serve Satan, and, and who do we decide? And, and uh, um, I loved uh, closing shows with fences because it was like leaving it in people's minds. You know, who do you serve? If I had been smart enough to write, you got to serve somebody. If I had been Bob Dylan and written that, uh, that'd be a great song to close the show with. You know, to have people meditating on, you know, what is he saying? You know, that I stand on a fence and is there really God? Is there really Satan? And, you know, to Christians, these things are so fundamentally obvious, but to non-Christians, the concept of Satan uh, is ridiculous. It's like the Wizard of Oz ridiculous. And, and uh, to be able to, as a messenger of the Lord, even cause people to think about the concept of Satan, I feel like I've accomplished so much. Again, just another thing about leading horses I'm so proud of is, you know, that for about 300 shows, I let audiences know that there was an enemy of their soul. And, it, you know, truthfully, if you get people to believe in Satan, you can get them to believe in Jesus, because how else would we know about Satan if it were for Christ? And, uh, you know, that was very instrumental to me coming to the Lord, is that... Uh, um, I had a really radical encounter with Satan because I messed around with some satanic literature and some mumbo jumbo uh, black magic stuff that I didn't take serious. And when I uh, conjured up the evil one and saw the devastating effect that had on people's lives, I went, wow, Satan just led me to Christ. And to be able to plant in people's heads that there is a Satan and have the Holy Spirit come into people's lives and remind them of that. And of course, you know, people walk away with my CDs and, and uh, Fences was such a catchy, meaning repetitious song um, that <laughs> you think about people driving and they're like, God versus Satan, God versus Satan stuck in their head. And it's like, well, praise the Lord. I love my job. I get to uh, prance around like a rock star and other people have to think about their eternal soul.